Hi guys, welcome back. This is Erin from Paint Those Piggies and today instead of Friday favorites I'm going to be doing a disappointing products video. So my sister mentioned this video to me when she was watching my other videos and I thought it was a great idea so I decided to do it. This week I didn't have a lot of Friday favorites which is why I didn't want to make a video on like just two or three products. Instead I'm going to show you all the products that have disappointed me. A lot of them are hyped up in the beauty community. As always, this is just my opinion on these. If they work for you, great, but they didn't work for me and I'm going to explain why. I also wanted to put a little bit of twist on this video and show you what I like instead of these products, just what works better for me. So let's get right into it. So first I'm going to start off with kind of like face primers, things you put on before foundation. And I mentioned this in my last video. This is the Benefit Professional. This is just like a sample card of it. I have a couple of these. I have had a mini tube of it, like the small size. This is so bad for me. Like to give a background on my skin, I have very oily skin. It's not even combo. It's very oily. I have um, visible pores, a couple of lines, um, but overall like I'm not covering up like blemishes or anything like that. It's mostly like redness and discoloration, but this is supposed to be good for oily skin and a lot of people talk about it, but for me it was just terrible. It feels like really slippery, like that dimethicone feeling. I don't like primers like that. So I have like little putty colored dots on my face where the pores are filled in with this, but then it doesn't smooth over the rest of my face. So I apply foundation and it just emphasizes the pores even more. Okay, so I had to put my hair up because I got really warm and I can't do the rest of the video like that. Like I said, with the professional, I just hate it. It does not do anything for my skin. That being said, I haven't really found a primer that I really like. I've been kind of sampling a couple that I have just as small sample sizes. Today I'm trying the Urban Decay um, Optical Illusion Primer. It seems to be okay so far. I think I used a little bit too much because it was like really slippery. I think what I'm going to do is go to Sephora and get a couple different samples of primers to try them out because I know that you can do that. I just feel weird like going in and asking for samples and then leaving but I don't know. Maybe if I work myself up to it I'll do it but I have not found a primer that I'm in love with that does good things for my skin so there's that. Going along like base products, I've mentioned this before, this is the Stila One Step Correct, the one that has the swirl, that's like the green, the orange, kind of peachy shade, and the white shade. I don't think this works well for me. I do like it to add a moisture to my skin, which I'm very oily, so I don't have a lot of moisture problems, but as I'm getting older, <laughs> I notice my under eyes are pretty dry, and I did have an allergic reaction to a medication, and it left me with like a puffed up spot under this eye, and it hasn't healed. It's been like three months, and it continues to crack open, and so some days I just can't wear any makeup at all. But I like this to use as a moisturizer, especially around my eye area, but it does say it's supposed to color correct, and that was Lucy. It does say it's supposed to color correct, but for me it just doesn't. So this, although I have used most of it, I'm not going to be repurchasing because it just doesn't color correct for me. That is a collar dragging on the table if you can hear that. Next up, I have something that everybody talks about, but I, j I don't get it. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. It's just a little sample. I've also tried the D-Slick Setting Spray. I don't get it. It's the only makeup spray I've ever tried, like primer spray, setting spray, primer water. I haven't tried any of that. These Urban Decay ones, though, I don't get it. It doesn't do anything for my skin. It doesn't set my makeup. This one, especially, I've been trying to use and I've been spraying it after all my face makeup is done. And what it's been doing is kind of like splashing my eyeshadow all under my eyes. So I spray this and it happens every single time. I use a primer with my eyeshadows, never have a problem with like fallout during the day with my eyeshadows, but when I spray this, it just gets eyeshadow all over my under eyes. So I don't get it. It doesn't do anything for me. The D-Slick doesn't make my skin any less oily throughout the day. So these Urban Decay setting sprays, 
just don't get it for me. <laughs> I don't understand the hype. Okay, next up I have two kind of foundation products. I almost dropped it. The, they're both, um, let's see. One is a foundation and the other is a, supposed to be kind of like a BB cream. I cannot find a BB or CC cream that works for my skin. I've tried a bunch of them. I actually just bought a new CoverGirl one to try that's in a haul sitting in a bag over on the desk over there that I haven't tried but I've heard good reviews. I continue to have the problem of they make my face too oily, they're too thick, they don't have enough coverage. The first one that I do not like is the All May Smart Shade Skin Tone Matching Makeup. This has SPF 15, which I appreciate. I'm not one to put sunscreen on my face because it makes me more oily, which I know you're supposed to put sunscreen on your face, but I just haven't found a product that works for me. I have tried a Caudalie product that had sunscreen in it, but I can't seem to find it online anywhere. So I don't know if they discontinued it, but that was the only sunscreen product I actually liked. This one is SPF 15. It is in the lightest shade, Pale. This is what it looks like up close. It's just kind of like that typical BB CC cream um, drugstore kind of packaging. This honestly feels like you just put a moisturizer on. It doesn't feel like you have anything on your face. I just, it doesn't cover anything. So I don't see the point of it when it just doesn't do anything. Like why put an extra layer of something on your face that doesn't do anything. It comes out this kind of whitish color and transforms into a different color as you rub it in. You can kind of see it's transforming to a darker shade, but then eventually it just rubs into nothing. I put a bunch on my hand, but it turns into a darker shade. You can see the light part down here and the darker part up here, but eventually it just kind of rubs into nothing. I tried a bunch of BB creams when I went to Florida last year and none of them worked. So this one, the Almay Smart Shade, just doesn't work for me. So the next, I just had to rub all that off because I had so much of that on my hand. Next kind of foundation product is the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation and this is in 010 Light Porcelain. Now it's hard to find drugstore products that are light enough for my skin. This one is, it is light porcelain. I think it does come in porcelain but the light porcelain is what works for me. This I, I want to like it because it's supposed to be for oily skin, I would assume, because it says stay matte, lightweight shine control. <sighs> it is so bad. I tried it the other day after not using it for a year because I remember it being so bad, so greasy, so oily, and this just makes the oil 10 times worse. I think it's because it's like a mousse texture. It's almost like kind of whipped, but that it's like a greasy kind of whipped formula. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it feels greasy on the face. It never really sets. It just feels so oily on the skin and makes the oils 10 times worse. I wore this a couple times last week and I was just miserable on the days that I wore it because my face was always shiny. It always looked so gross and I could not wait to take this off. So for me, for my oily skin, this Rimmel Stay Matte, not a good one. <laughs> Moving along, I have this eyeliner, which I've mentioned before. This is the Rimmel Scandalize Eyeliner in Nude. A lot of people talk about this, but I honestly hate it. I don't understand the hype behind this. I don't have especially watery eyes. I do have sensitive eyes, but this just does not transfer to my waterline. I don't understand. It's like I can just rub it back and forth, back and forth, even like little strokes. It just doesn't come off on my waterline. I just don't know what it is. So when I press hard to try and get it on my waterline, it crumbles into little chunks, which then get into my eyes, onto my contacts. I have to take my contacts out, clean them, and go back to glasses because this eyeliner has crumbled off inside my eye. So this, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. And now I realize that I was supposed to be doing things that I like instead of these products, which I completely forgot. But I will mention an alternative to this one. I did mention this in a haul video. This is the NYX 
Full White um, Eyeliner, and this is, it's called an Inner Eye Brightener, and this is the shade Linen. It's like the one with the little pink bottom on it. I used this in my waterline today. I've used it before. I love it. It's amazing. It's everything that I wanted this nude color to be. This is brightening. It makes my eyes look open. It doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't go on my contacts. I love it. It's amazing. It's like a soft pink color, but they have other colors. They have like a yellow, a lavender, a blue, a mint. So I'm definitely going to be picking up more of these. This is what I prefer instead of the Rimmel one, which is going to go into the trash after this video. Next up, I have another product that everybody raves about. <laughs> This is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. A lot of people talk about this as their holy grail concealer. It is the worst concealer I have ever put under my eyes. And I feel bad because I spent a lot on this. It's not a cheap concealer. It's in the $20 range, over $20. And so I don't wanna throw it away. And what I've been doing is using it as like a spot concealer on my face and it works better for that. For that reason, it's fine, but just under the eyes where a lot of people use it and talk about it, it does not do anything for me. It just creases, it's heavy, it's kind of like, again, that like moussey, lighter texture. Maybe that's just not good on my skin, but I don't get it. Although I do like their shade range. This is in Fair Neutral, which I think is the lightest color. I don't know if they've come out with more colors since then, but it is light enough for me, which I appreciate. But as an under eye concealer, this Naked Skin Concealer does not do it for me. I like the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is in the brightening shade. I, this one I love. I've almost used it all up. This is the Maybelline Dream Lumi. This is in the shade Ivory. Again, light enough for me. Obviously, these are all light enough. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about them. I also like the Maybelline Master Conceal. This is in the color Fair. I also have it in a darker shade. This is in the shade Light for when I get a tiny bit of color during the summer. But these are all drugstore, and I like them better than this higher-priced Urban Decay one. Okay, next up I have two eye products. This is getting to be a long video, very ranty, but I have two eye products and then one lip product and a body product and then we'll be done. So the first I have that I'm waving around, this is the CoverGirl, the Super Sizer Mascara. A lot of people talk about this and I knew I had one. I recently found it and tried it again because I couldn't remember what I thought of it. I just don't like this. I think the brush is so thin. Like if you can see this, it has a little bit right there, like a little bit of an angle, but it's so thin. I find it hard to use. I end up getting it inside like on my tight line, which I don't put anything in my tight line because I think it's irritating to me and my eyes. Which this ends up getting up on the tight line. It transfers all over. Like if I get it on the tight line, it goes to the water line. And I just don't think this is the mascara for me. I don't have anything against drugstore mascaras. The one that I really like from the drugstore is the Maybelline Last this is so hard to say. Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. Although I know this doesn't work for everybody because I have it because my sister hated it. And this is my third tube. So really drugstore mascaras are hit and miss. I don't like this one. I like this one instead, but that's just my opinion. Next up is an eyeshadow that really disappointed me. I'm really into like the duochrome kind of holographic trend. I want to find an eyeshadow that's like holographic. I know that's not super practical, but I haven't found one yet that is actually a holographic eyeshadow. Maybe somebody's going to come out with that, but I really am into the duochromes. I've said before that the Makeup Geek duochromes like just puff my eyes up. I was so allergic to them. So when I saw this one come out, I was really excited, especially for the color. This is my Tiny Z palette, which is actually really handy. This is the color I'm talking about. This is Urban Decay's Fireball. Okay, it's stuck in there, so I can't get it out, but this is what it looks like. It's supposed to be a peachy shade with a little bit of a pink and a gold duochrome on me. I don't know if I got a dud or something, but it just doesn't show up. On my finger, it shows up, and I can actually see the duochrome in it, but when I apply it on my eyes, I just don't see it. 
I don't get it. It looks good in the swatch, but in person and in use, it just does not transfer to my eyes like that. It doesn't look duochrome. It doesn't look bright. It doesn't look anything. It just looks like I put a matte peach on my eyes. I've seen people do really cool looks with this, but on me, like I said, I don't know if I got a dud or something, but Urban Decay's Fireball just does not work for me. So I really love Urban Decay eyeshadows. I haven't had a problem with them before, but it's just that specific shade that I just don't like. <laughs> okay, last but not least, actually I have two products left. I have the L'Occitane um, Almond Shower Gel. It's the Almond Oil Shower Gel. I have this as a sample. It's actually bigger than the one I tried. I'll have to get somebody to try this to take it off my hands because I just hate this. I don't understand why everybody like buys bottles and bottles of it for me it doesn't feel cleansing it doesn't foam it doesn't like really feel that hydrating it does for me it doesn't feel like it's cleaning so when i'm in the shower i want to feel like the product i'm using is actually cleaning and last up is something that i've recently been trying this week this has been talked about so much and i almost bought it in the full size because everybody was talking about it and this is the bite beauty agave lip mask i just have a tiny sample here and it has three different colors champagne natural and smashed is the red color i've been trying the natural which is the one that most people talk about it's just like supposed to be a lip mask it says apply this hydrating lip mask day or night for soft supple lips my problem is I feel like I'm spreading like some kind of solidified oil, like grease on my lips. It's so thick, which wouldn't be a problem if it actually like sank into the lips and moisturized. My problem is that I put this like thick, like gummy, you know, mask on and it never sinks into my lips. I use the Jack Black lip balms out of the squeezy tubes. I love those. Overnight, they eventually sink into my lips. When I use this overnight, it just never did anything. Every night, I ended up wiping it off in the middle of the night because it just was so sticky and so thick and never sank into my lips. It should have worked in theory, but it didn't. I hope you guys enjoyed this disappointing products video. Like I said, if you love these products, that is awesome. They just aren't for me. I hope this was helpful, especially if you have similar tastes or a similar skin type. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.